Hey guys, this is MJ at His Truly, locating and educating prodigals at risk in these final hours, moments, nanoseconds prior to the rapture of the church, which we know is imminent. Any moment could happen before this video is finished. What is a prodigal? A prodigal is someone who only believes falsely that they have forfeited their salvation when the fact of the matter is salvation can never, ever, true salvation can never, ever be forfeited or lost. We are sealed until the day of redemption. Jesus Christ does not, does not ever give up on us, ever. Um, what is salvation? Salvation is the gospel. The gospel is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. That Jesus Christ died for our sins. Um, according to scripture, he was buried and on the third day rose again. God made it very, very simple to get saved, born again. A is to simply admit that we are a sinner in need of a savior. B is to believe that Jesus Christ is this world's only savior. And C is call upon his name. The Bible says all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Period. End of subject. Not some. Not all. only those that are doing uh, good works. Good works don't get us to heaven, friend. Um... Works don't get us into heaven, period. Everything was done on the cross. Jesus Christ did it all. We are sealed the moment we say I do to Jesus Christ. All right, so I'm going to read to you today from my second book, My Poetic Justice. And um, I want to welcome any new subscribers. Um, I pray for you guys. I am a... I identify as a prodigal. I was a prodigal for 10 long years, so I know your struggle. I know the journey. And um, anyone who's out there who has left the traditional church, it is for good reason that we leave the church. But we are the church, okay? Know that um, works don't get us saved. Works don't keep us saved. We don't obtain our salvation. Um, and we can't sustain our salvation. Jesus Christ obtained our salvation. And we are born again once. Okay? It's one and done. It's a one and done deal. So if you got saved when you were 11, you were like I did, that's it. You become a child of God. It's not like you become a child of God and then he throws you away when you do something wrong. We are, we enter in to Christ's righteousness. Okay, do we stumble? Do we fall? Yeah, some of us are uh, longer than others and uh, go for harder falls. All right, so this is called, this is a letter from a prodigal. I hope you guys are all doing great. Um, I'm kind of losing my voice. I don't want to um, confess that I am, but I don't want to deny that I am either. Okay, dear church, I know that you don't know me and I probably don't know you. But in God's eyes, we're equally cherished, chosen, and born anew. For my survival, I must depend upon you, and likewise, you upon me. Please allow me to introduce myself, because, obviously, I am hidden from your eyes to see. I am God's beloved prodigal, and I think I may be lost. I accepted our Lord and Savior without true knowledge of the cost. Please come and find me, although I assure you that I know the way. Don't listen to my manufactured confidence. Don't believe a single word I say. Please hunt me down as if I were your own. I know that you don't know me, but I'll die out here on my own. Please take my hand and comfort me and tell me it's okay. After all, I am a prodigal and prodigals go astray. And please do me a favor when I've agreed to hear you out. Let not from your mouth proceed blame, anger, and doubt. You see, I've already accepted my savior. I'm going to heaven just like you. But my shame prohibits me from facing hypocrites occupying those church pews. Yes, I am God's beloved prodigal, regardless of what you believe. I've yet to discover the knowledge that my wayward soul has failed to receive. I promise that when someone finds me and I finally learn the facts, nothing will be impossible and nothing will I lack. Please come and rescue me. I'm out here all alone. If someone doesn't Make it soon. We'll meet then in our heavenly home. Yes, I am God's beloved prodigal. I will not go away. I'm part of your very own body, eternally here to stay. Sincerely, the prodigal. 
Luke 15, 20, and he arose and came to his father, but when he was yet a great way off, he had compassion on him and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Okay, so I'm going to try to share with you guys what the Lord has given me. It's, it's intense. It is really awesome. So actually, I wrote it down. You know, I write everything down and journal. That's how everything came about in my books and everything, but in the three books that I've written. But, um, okay, on 5-12, which was two days ago, as I began to read the word begrudgingly, mind you, um, like, okay, I'm going to sit down. And, you know, the flesh does that. The flesh and the spirit bite with each other. Always will. Always has. Always will. So when you sit down to read the word, just know that your flesh is going to say, like, oh, i got to go clean the toilet. Or I forgot to make the bed. Or, you know, make up a million different stories of what you have to do. Just know that that struggle is going to exist always. All right. Anyway, so as I began to read the word, begrudgingly, I felt a huge rush of love come over me and I closed my eyes and pictured the Lord in a white robe on one knee with a bouquet of roses and he said you know how very much I love you don't you yes Lord I do I answered I want you to know that each time you open my word for fellowship with me it is a fragrance unto my heart and unto my throne I love you beloved do not grow weary soon and very soon soon i say soon then i saw the individual petals of the roses float upward toward heaven it was the most amazing vision that i had my eyes closed but it was a total picture i mean it was awesome um, and then as I began to read the word, it was, God gave me Proverbs twelve twenty five. anxiety in the heart of man causes depression. And so stay in the word because, um, and be anxious for nothing. Um, you know, because God does not want us to be anxious in these final moments, in these final moments of the end of days. And there's an acceleration in my spirit. Of, I don't know what it is. It's an expectation of some sort. And I don't know if you guys feel it, but whew, I mean, I really feel it. But anyway, um, I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine. Remember in the ancient um, Jewish wedding, and if you don't know about it, I have done videos on the ancient Jewish wedding. Um, we are already married. Okay, as in the ancient Galilean wedding, um, we are already married to the groom, sealed. The Holy Spirit seals us at the moment of salvation. Okay, so with the Holy Spirit of promise, John 14, 3, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. The final step, in a Jewish wedding tradition is also um, nisun, to take, a word that comes from neso, I don't know if I'm saying these words correctly, but which means to lift up. Hmm. At this time, with each noise, fanfare and romance carry the bride. Okay, this is once, you know, um, the bride is carried home. Once again, the bride and groom would enter the hoopah. Okay, now listen closely. All right. And recite a blessing over the wine, a symbol of joy. Remember, Jesus said, I will not drink of this wine until I drink of it in the kingdom. And finally, they finalize their vows. Um, and the chamber is the hoopah, it's a canopy. Okay. So what is the canopy for us right now? And God showed me that scripture, his banner over us is love. The scripture, his banner over us is love. Um, 
in Song, Song of Solomon. I don't know exactly where it is, but um, I got to work. Let me see. Um, anyways, it's in Song of Solomon. Tonight I was reading it, but his banner over me is love. So tonight, um, God will show me that is the canopy that is over us. That like in the ancient Galilean wedding, but it is God, his canopy, his, his, his banner over us is love. So, and I Googled, you know, I was Googling it and the song, his, I don't know if you guys have ever heard it, but please Google it and listen to it. His banner over me is love. It's a kid's song. His banner over me is love. My voice is going out, but, um, I'm going to, these are the words, the Lord is mine. I am his, his banner over me is love. Repeat, then repeat. Um, he brought me to his banqueting table. His banner over me is love. He lifted me up to heavenly places. His banner over me is love. He is the vine and we are the branches. His banner over me is love. Jesus is the rock of my salvation. His banner over me is love. Um, there's one way to peace through the power of the cross. His banner over me is love. And then you repeat, his banner over me is love. Um, yeah, Song of Solomon 2.4. He has brought me to the banqueting house and his banner over me is love. Banner is a declaration of allegiance. God is faithful, guys. He is unwavering, steadfast, reliable. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord is my banner. Okay, Isaiah 11:10. In that day, the root of Jesse, Jesus, will stand as a banner for the peoples. The nations will rally to him, and his place of rest will be glorious. That's our Jesus. Okay, so finally, tonight, when I was coming to work, all right, this is crazy. Um, so I have a 2018, um, Chevy, um, cruise and I was coming to work and I was at a stoplight and, um, and I forgot that my car has like an auto feature that it just stops. Like it stalls crazy thing. It just like kind of stalls, like the car is stopping. And when it did that, I just like freaked out. My heart was like, my heart almost stopped, you know? And then I remembered that the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart and said to me at that point, time as we know it is about to come to that kind of abrupt stop. As a dispensation of grace ends, panic will be felt worldwide to those left behind. Make sure you are ready. Are you ready? It's as simple as the ABCs. I have linked the ABCs in the description box. It can't be any easier, guys. I mean, God has made it so very simple. We are all born into a condition of sin. Okay, we are all sinners. Um, we're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. It's nothing that we do to earn our salvation. So, and, and you know what? Satan is a liar. And he, his minions and demons fill so many pulpits in, in this churches worldwide. And telling people that, you know, you have to maintain a certain amount of works in order to get you into heaven. No, we enter heaven into the presence of a holy God through Christ alone. We enter the presence of a holy God. There is one door, one mediator. The only way into the throne room of God is through Christ alone. One way. Jesus Christ is that way. He is the door. Okay, so you can't even enter heaven. You can't even enter the presence of a God unless you enter in through the door. And that door is Jesus Christ. I've learned the ABCs of salvation in the description box. Are you ready? Be rapture ready. And it's nothing that you do other than believe. Believe. 
that Jesus Christ is this world's only Savior and embrace the gospel of your salvation while there is yet time. I love you, beloved, and um, I'm praying for each and every one of you. I lift you up to the throne and know that God is listening and he knows our struggle. He knows what's going on right now. And I'll tell you, the struggle is intense, man. <laughs> it is intense. Um, wow. I mean, I feel this acceleration in my spirit. Like, I don't know what it is. It's like, I mean, it's obvious so many things are going on right now. If if you don't see what's going on all around us, you get you got to be blind. I mean, we can only we can only believe half of what we see. And I mean, spiritually, we would drop dead if we saw what was going on around us spiritually. I mean, God protects us. He's got angels around us 24 seven. But this new world order that's setting up around us right now and crypto, uh, one world government, new, new world order. Um, it's, that's just a catchy phrase for new world, new world order is, um, you know, uh, one world government, uh, one world religion, um, one world currency. All of this is taking play, guys. It's all setting up right around us. And we're watching it just transpire. And this world is never, ever going back to normal. Normal isn't coming back. Jesus is coming back. So if you don't know who Jesus Christ is, you need to accept him and let him in. Let him into your heart, into your life. Accept the gospel while you still have time. There will still be time in the seven-year tribulation. There will still be time. But you will be beheaded because of your faith, more than likely. Um, and, you know, people think Christians are crazy. But when, that second, that very second, when the rapture happens, there are going to be millions of people who just look back and say, those are going to be called tribulation saints because they knew Christians that spoke the truth. Okay. Um, why wait? Why wait when you can do it now? Jesus loves you. He died for you. All right, don't wait when you can do it now. All right. Um, the seven-year tribulation is... That's what's going to happen after the rapture. All right. The Antichrist is going to take over. I'm not immediately. Um, we're not waiting for the Antichrist. We're waiting for Jesus Christ. But the Antichrist is going to take over. And it's not somewhere where you want to be. All right. This um, vaccine is not the mark of the beast, guys, as it is being pronounced. I'm a nurse. I haven't taken it. Um, no judgment to those who have. I refuse to take it, but, um, you know, people are, are, are going on YouTube saying this is the mark of the beast. I believe it's a precursor to it. Um, uh, I just don't want to say a whole lot of stuff because I, I don't want to get strikes against this channel, but there's just a, a whole lot going on right now. Just a whole lot going on. Um, I'm not going to say a whole lot, but. I love you guys, and I'm praying for you, and we are going home so very soon, sooner than any of us know, sooner than any of us know. I'm praying for you guys. I love you, and keep looking up, guys. Our redemption draws nigh. God bless you guys.